All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 29th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. And of course, uh, the 4th of July is uh, this coming Monday. And church is this coming Sunday. I'm concerned. I am concerned. Uh, since I had, I absented myself from uh, a week ago Sunday because the church decided to have a, a uh, breakfast in lieu of church service uh, for fathers, which the scripture tells us to do where? A confusion. In other words, there's a confusion. You wouldn't expect, you shouldn't expect this among holiness churches. But holiness churches, the, the Christianity in America is in a state of deep apostasy. It's across the board, pretty much. And it's like in ancient Israel. They they worship in the temple, and then they go up in the high places and worship Baal. What's the difference? God is God. What difference does it make how many forms of God you worship? It's all the same one, Right? Well, no. First of all, I want to deal with the. I've been. It hasn't been an issue with me, a, a, at least a, a front burner issue for me for quite a few years. Because when I was at the nursing home, I was the one controlling everything, uh, as far except for, except for the congregation uh, and their questions. But I, I simply ignored secular holidays. I simply ignored the idolatry of this world because I didn't have to bring it in there. And I certainly wouldn't because I belong to Christ. Christ saved me. He is my Lord. He is my Savior. My allegiance, allegiance is to him. But I've, I've, had, I've had to walk out of fundamental Baptist churches because they decided to say the Pledge of Allegiance. They are utterly confused. It's, it's, a, it's bad enough that they have an American flag up there. Now, you can sort of justify it, but then the Roman Catholics justify their idolatry, too. But it, it, you ought not do it. You ought not do it. What place does the American flag have among the assembly of the saints, it is a confusion. It is bringing things together that ought not be brought together. Toeva. It's like having sex with animals. It's an abomination. Idolatry is an abomination with God. The most common uh, occurrence in the Old Testament of the term abomination has to do with idolatry. The American flag is an object of devotion, of worship in America. Patriotism is a religion in America. It is the religion of the state. You need to go back and read Rousseau's lecture on civil religion. America builds monuments to its idols. Mount Rushmore, the biggest. 
the Statue of Liberty. These are idols. These are American idols. They are things of devotion, of worship. You might not be worshiping them as God. But you're, you're giving to them what belongs to God alone. First of all, let's go over to Webster's Dictionary. Allegiance. Now, I, I, this is one of the first issues I encountered as a born-again believer was the issue of allegiance. I was in the military at the time. Is Christ Lord? Or is the President of the United States, the Commander-in-Chief, Lord? What do you do when you have a conflict like that? Allegiance. Noun. Definition of allegiance. One. The obligation of a feudal vassal to his liege lord. This is where the word allegiance comes from. To give your allegiance to someone. To a lord. B. The fidelity owed by a subject or a citizen to a sovereign or government. As a Christian, who is your sovereign? Who is your government? Jesus says, no man can serve two masters. No man can serve two masters. Two, this is a really odd one. The obligation of an alien to the government under which the alien resides. No, I don't have an obligation to the government of Mexico if I happen to be in the state of government, uh, the country of Mexico, or to the government of the United States when I'm here. I don't have an obligation to them. My obligation is to Christ. And Christ in, uh, instructs us to, to be in subjection to those in authority. That is not the same as allegiance or obedience. I only uh, subject myself to the government to the degree that it's possible under Christ. But my allegiance is to Christ. The only reason I obey the laws of the government is because Christ tells me to subject myself to it. They are not my government. They are of the world. Let's go over to the scriptures. Christians, so-called Bible-believing Christians, and it's the the most the, the place you're most apt to encounter the Pledge of Allegiance on the Sunday near the Fourth of July is a Fundamentalist Baptist church, and I'd like to point out that the Fundamentalist Baptists are really a confused people now. They do, of course, they have a form of gospel that does not require allegiance to Christ, generally speaking. The free grace gospel denies the lordship of Christ, denies that a Christian is obligated to obey Christ. It's absurd. That's what happens when you follow a man-made theology rather than the word of God. I left the religion of Lutheranism that I was raised in, and I'm not going to buy into some other man-made religion in its place. And fundamentalism, the problem with, with fundamental Baptists in America is they are not fundamental enough. They are not biblical. They will argue about the Bible. They will waive the Bible but they will not subject themselves to the Bible. They have their own systems of belief. They have got their own gospel, generally speaking. I'm generalizing. These are independent churches, mostly independent. But there is, there is a peer pressure that tends to control them. And they want to, like all people, tend to want to follow someone else. Like, 
Jack Hiles. That was a mess. You know, I, so who has the biggest, most successful church? Let's do what they do. Well, they might be the biggest, most successful church because they're totally, totally sold out to the world or to Satan, the same thing. So the, the, the proper definition of allegiance, going back to the original, is, is the allegiance you owe to your Lord in the feudal system. You pledged allegiance to a, uh, a superior And he owed his allegiance to his superior. Yeah, it's the way it works in the mafia. You no, know, an alien in the country is not under obligation. Uh, allegiance is not owed. Now, if, if you happen to be residing in a country and your citizenship's not there, you're not under obligation to serve that country, say, in the military. No. That's foolishness. Now, they might try to force you. But, uh, yeah. Uh, let's go to the Scripture. We need to go to the Scripture. Let's go back to the Old Testament, to the beginning, to the Ten Commandments. This is Exodus chapter 20, verse 5. This is the beginning of the Ten Commandments. I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of the land, or out of the house of bondage. I've got my audio a little hot here. Sorry about that. Or my audio is a little hot. See, this is the God who delivered them from slavery, the slavery of Egypt, where they were oppressed by the world, the flesh, and the devil. Say, uh, Egypt is a type of the world, the bondage of sin. They were in bondage. God delivered them. Christians, if you've been born again, you were in bondage to sin and to Satan. And Christ delivered you if you've been born again. I am the Lord your God, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You shall have no other gods before me. I don't even want to see them. You shall not make for yourself a carved image or any likeness of anything that is under heaven above or in the earth beneath or in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or serve them, for I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers on the children to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing mercy to thousands, to those who love me and keep my commandments. Well, why don't we go on to the next here? You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless who takes his name in vain. So when you identify your Christ, yourself with Christ, you've taken his name have you done that in vain? If you do not bow to his lordship, you're taking his name in vain. You're calling yourself a Christian when you do not subject yourself to his authority. So common among many fundamentalist evangelicals, the free grace gospel, the grace that that considers Lord, the lordship of Christ a false gospel. Well, the, the lordship of Christ is, is a result of the gospel. You're not saved because you make Christ your Lord. No, God makes Christ your Lord. 
He changes your heart. He changes your allegiance. If your allegiance is to the world or the things of this world, any of it, you're an idolater. You're an idolater. You're worshiping a false god. Let's go over to one other scripture. 1 John chapter 5, starting at verse 18 through the end of the chapter. We know that whoever is born of God does not sin. This is a present continual. In other words, he's not practicing sin. But he who has been born of God keeps himself, and the wicked one does not touch him. He keeps himself to Christ. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Literally, lies, reclines in him. Or you could translate it as, in wickedness, would be another possible rendering. The whole world reclines in it, in wickedness, in the wicked one. Both are correct renderings. Both are true. As Satan, when he tempted Jesus, said the, that the whole, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in an instant and said, I, all these things have been given over to me. And I can give them to whoever I want. Bow down and worship me, and I'll give them to you. And Jesus' response was, Be gone, Satan. We not, How many Christians would say that? If, he, if this devil was to offer you the kingdoms of this world for merely bowing down to him, for merely pledging allegiance to him, for burning a pinch of incense to him and saying, Caesar is Lord, Satan is Lord. Would you say, be gone, Satan? Or would you take him up? Although he wouldn't have to offer the vast majority of people all the kingdoms of the earth, he can buy them much cheaper than that. He buys people all the time at discount prices. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies under the sway of the wicked one. Under the sway is added. Lies in the wicked, the wicked one. Reclines in the wicked one. We know that the Son of God has come and he has given us understanding and understanding that we may know him who is true. And we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life, to be in Christ. Little children, keep yourself from idols. Amen. Now, that's the ending of First John. The last thing John says is, little children, keep yourself from idols. From idols. See, now an idol, even, you can have an idol that is supposed to represent the true God, but it's still an idol because you cannot, it is not possible to make an image of God that represents him as he really is. Jesus Christ represents God as he really is because he is God. As God's true image, he is God. But nothing else is. Nothing man makes is. Nothing man imagines can be. Only God can be the true image of God. And man was created to be the image of God, but it required God in him to do that. And Adam separated himself from God, separated himself. He died spiritually. Fallen man is not the image of God. 
Otherwise, he'd look like God. He'd sound like God. He'd talk like God. He'd be holy and righteous and good like God is. The idea that fallen man is the image of God is a perversion. He was created for that purpose, but failed to accomplish the purpose of God, lost the purpose of God when he betrayed God and worshipped and listened to a serpent, to a dragon, to Satan. Now, this Sunday, in many churches, the pastor or someone else will lead the congregation in the pledge of allegiance to the domain of darkness, to the United States. Perhaps they do similar things in other countries. Probably not on the 4th of July, but... Are we so blind, are Christians so blind? I fear so. I fear so. It's been my, it was my practice before I was started ministering in the nursing home on a regular basis that to, every Sunday to, to not attend worship services near the 4th of July. Lest, well, lest I have to leave. Lest I have to get up and walk out. Lest I be offended by their idolatry. Lest I find out that the people I gather with to worship Christ are a bunch of idolaters, confused idolaters. I don't believe they knowingly do what they do. I just believe they've been confused. And their preachers have confused them. Who leads this? Who allows it? The guilt lies on the pastors who don't say, no, we're not going to do this. This is of the world. We are here. We gather in the name of Christ. Not in the name of Joe Biden or the American flag or the Constitution. All things that are simply of the world and are going to perish with the world. Amen. Because that's the only suitable thing for them. To perish. Because they all rear their head in rebellion against God Almighty. America was founded in rebellion against God Almighty, as I've stated many times. And people don't want to hear that. Has your heart been consecrated unto Christ? And I have a fear, especially after the Father's Day thing. You think, they see these little things. The Old Testament there talks about the, the little foxes that spoil the vine. These little things lead to idolatry. Idolatry can disguise itself as little things. Especially in a country when you're raised saying the Pledge of Allegiance every single day from your youngest days up in public school. I hope they don't do such a thing in Roman Catholic schools. See, this, this is an evangelical and fundamentalist sin. Uh, older mainline denominations, at least what I was raised in, which was like a moderate Lutheran, denominations with a formal liturgy that are not American creations. They would not do such things. The Pledge of Allegiance was confined to the Boy Scouts troop they sponsored. That was bad enough. But to have it as part of the church worship... You can be pretty confident that such things wouldn't occur. I never saw such things. There was an American flag up front, and that was bad enough, but I didn't know that then. Because you're raised to adore the flag. You're raised with these, these uh, to the Pledge of Allegiance, you know, that it's sort of like we hold these truths to be self-evident, but that's not it. 
One nation under God. No, the Bible says this nation isn't under God. This political entity called the United States is under Satan in the domain of darkness. It lies in the wicked one. Do you believe God? Do fundamentalist Baptists, Bible-believing Baptists, believe God? Or are they willing to fight about the Bible but unwilling to actually do what God says? Believe the Bible. I think they prefer the former. We like to fight about it. We like to treat the book as an abstract object and fight about it. But as far as obeying Christ, well, that's not part of our theology. You don't have to obey Christ to be saved. They do not understand the new birth. They do not understand that salvation, I'm speaking in broad terms, the majority, and in fact, when you're talking about independent fundamentalist Baptists, you're talking about the great majority here, the supermajority here. Their system, their ideas of the gospel, and I'm talking about firsthand knowledge, this would apply to the Southern Baptists, too, the great majority, and to many other others. But they do not understand that the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. They do not know. I fear that many of them do not know Christ. They do not know the power of his salvation. They do not know the new birth. They think it's a result of saying something or doing something, and it's simply a category change in heaven. God takes you out of the lost file and puts you in the saved file, and that's it. He doesn't change you. He doesn't give you a new heart and a new spirit. He doesn't convict you before that of your sin and show you your need for a Savior. So you go to Christ, you're, you're not, you don't go, there's so many people do not come to Christ to be saved from their bondage to sin, but rather to escape hell. They don't want to be saved from their sin, they just want to escape the consequences of their sin, which is the judgment of God. They don't really want to be reconciled with God. They want to continue living their lives for themselves, seeking their own will and their own desires, and get the get out of hell free card. So when they die, they can use that and say, oh, I'm going to heaven. You wouldn't want to be in heaven because everybody in heaven worships and obeys God, the will of God that's done in heaven. Why would you want to be there? When you're a rebel, you're still a re See, unsaved rebels that think they're Christians. They've been convinced they're Christians. Just like the, theolo it's the same theology that Rick Warren espoused. Say this prayer, and if, if you were sincere, now you're in heaven. Easy prayerism, it's been called, by some of the, uh, the more uh, um, godly-minded Independent Baptist. And when it comes to independent Baptists, I want to say there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's since I've met some very godly, uh, Christ-loving uh, independent Baptists that the Spirit of God just, you know, they almost glowed. But they were the small minority. I've met others that are so steeped in, in independent Baptist tradition. They don't even recognize it. They, they mix all kinds of things together and follow nonsense, like King James Onlyism. They worship a particular translation of the Bible, but they don't, they don't even obey that. See, there's nothing wrong with the King James. It's the best translation. It is. Objectively the best. It just is no longer a translation of English, though. It's a translation into archaic English 
That's the only problem with it. But it's still the most reliable. I've looked at them. It's the most reliable. But there's, there's some of them. That is their article of faith. The King James Bible. It is God's holy inspired word. But we dare not open it and read it. It's like the the, uh, the Orthodox, Eastern Orthodox worship I saw uh, in Israel when I visited back in the 80s. Uh, I think it was the Church of the... Uh, it's down near Hebron. I can't remember what they called it. Anyway, it was... Uh, it was by the uh, the tomb of uh, Abraham. Anyway, there was a worship service going on, if I me my memories. Well, it's been a few years now. I might have things confused. But there was an Orthodox worship service. And I saw them, you know, they brought the the, the, the gospel, the, the jewel-encrusted book. And the priest kisses the book. But he didn't read the book. He goes through his rituals. But he's not really worshiping Christ because he doesn't really know Christ. It's all an exterior man-made concoction. It's a form of idolatry because it is not the true gospel. It's a it's a false gospel. We worship and kiss the Bible, but we do not read the Bible. We do not obey the Bible. We do not obey the God who gave us the Bible. We keep our traditions instead. So often you'll hear evangelicals or fundamentalists speak about how Rome does these things and they turn around and do the very same sin. They, they seek their own will. So many of these churches that claim to be Bible-believing call for people to be born again. Do they really know what it means? They, they, then you see them. They do what is right in their own eyes. See, all these churches, because they have no formal liturgy to restrain them, they just do what they want. What kind of music do we want to have? They do not... Pro I'm talking about the same assembly I... I, I, I say. When, when I speak about these things, I'm also speaking about where I'm attending. They're not fundamentalist Baptists. But I'm concerned. See, I, I can think of the fundamentalist Baptist churches around here. I suspect... More likely than not, they will recite the Pledge of Allegiance as part of their worship service this coming Sunday. Which is why, for many years, I've absented, absessed, absessed, absented myself. Is that a verb? Well, it is now. From worship on Sundays in those places for fear of the that, that I would... Be compelled to walk out. My poor wife, that I would embarrass her by saying, we got to get up and go. I don't want to be offended, but they're offending Christ. I'll be an offense to the congregation. What's wrong with that guy? He's leaving. Why? Isn't he patriotic? Yeah. But my kingdom, my loyalty is to heaven, not to the domain of darkness, which is what the United States is part of. And if you can't see that, the devil has blinded your eyes just as he has all the rest of the world. And the scripture says that he's blinded their eyes that they may not, might not, might not see the gospel. They make no distinction between the holy and the profane. Churches will do all kinds of things. 
oh, somebody in Churchill. You know, it's like there are some of the, these are the more modern yuppie oriented churches I'm talking about right now. They might have a, a club for beer brewing. If you want to brew some home brew, no big deal. But is, is the church the place for that? A basketball team or a baseball team. What does Christ have to do with baseball? The amount of money they'll throw into these, worshiping these idols too. I mean, there's churches with a, with a huge, you know, a, a better baseball field than most schools have. They've got a baseball team as part of the church. What is wrong with them? They are so blind. They cannot see their own idolatry, their own sin. All kinds of groups in the church that have nothing to do with Christ. All kinds of activities that have nothing to do with Christ. Not about Christ. Not about worshiping Christ. Not about edifying one another in Christ. And I am a concern. You would not expect. You would think you'd be safe. In a, in a denomination where you commonly used to see banners in the front of the thing, of the, of the, of the uh, sanctuary. Holiness unto the Lord. Sometimes I wonder, though, did they understand what that means? Where that quote even comes from? How many people in those churches understood, even then, what holiness is. It is you belonging to God. You're you belonging to Christ. You being his possession. You're holy because you've been set aside, set apart from the world onto him for his use. That's what makes something holy. It, that it belongs to God. And this Sunday, multitudes in many churches will betray Christ by pledging their allegiance to the domain of darkness and say lies about a false god, that that deity has liberty and justice for all. No, God does. That You'll hear lies that in churches routinely that the military has kept us free. No, freedom is a privilege and a blessing that God at times will grant his people, those who are faithful to him. Freedom from the bondage of sin belongs only to God's people. And every Christian should be free from that. The bondage to sin. I fear. I'm concerned. I'm betwixt two. On one hand, I just want to not go lest I be offended. I hope that they would not be so foolish as to do that at this little group. On the other hand, I know if they do, I will be compelled to stand and say, Jesus Christ is Lord. No man can serve two masters. And to explain, I made the mistake of thinking here, I was coming here today to worship Christ. And I find there's just a lot of confusion here. Perhaps I'll come back next week. If I was the pastor, I'd simply 
not have this problem. I would also make sure I explain to the congregation repeatedly what holiness is. Make sure they understood that. Make sure they understood that the whole world reclines, lies in the wicked one. Do not confuse. Do not practice idolatry. Keep yourself from idols. You belong to Christ. Do not bring the world into the worship of Christ. But I'm not the pastor. And I have a concern because they've already demonstrated they're willing to mix secular stuff, as long as they think it's good and wholesome with the Assembly of the Saints. I find this is, this is rather odd because historically, Nazarene churches have always separated the, the sanctuary, the, the place of worship from the fellowship hall. There'll be a separate building. So if you're going to have a dinner or something like that, they, they do that separately. But so, so they're so concerned that they don't want to eat food in the sanctuary. They, they want to keep that for holy purposes. But the very thought that they might... Now, they have not committed this sin. I'm just concerned that they might. As far as I know. But I have a concern. that they might bring the idolatry of America into the sanctuary this Sunday. They had a substitute pastor for a few weeks. I'm sure he would have done it because that man did not know what holiness was either. He freely mixed patriotism and worship. I think it was on... Uh, uh, Veterans Day or whatever, he, he uh, it's like, wait, I, 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 he was simply a fill-in. So I held my peace. And I'm not a member there. I can't be because they're not holy enough in the sense that they have a book filled with their own commandments the Nazarene handbook, things that aren't biblical. So I will worship with the saints, but I can't join their organization because they have not kept themselves wholly unto the Lord. They've added to it. They don't recognize it, but they've done it. Many people worshipped Baal in ignorance because their shepherds did not have eyes to see. They had ignorant, blind, worthless shepherds in the Old Testament. Search Ezekiel and find them. So it is today among Christians. We often have ignorant, blind foolish shepherds that can't tell the wolves from the sheep. Maybe because they're wolves themselves dressed as sheep. That freely mix the world and the church, what the world worships and what Christ and the worship of Christ, and they think it's good. They have betrayed Christ. They have brought idols into the house of God among his people, defiling God's people. How far removed is the Pledge of Allegiance in the Assembly of the Saints from the abomination of desolation? The abomination that makes the place desolate. How many Christian churches today who have a name 
that claims holiness or fidelity to God. But they're an empty shell. They're desolate of the Spirit of God. Desolate, polluted by the world. It's a bad situation. How many churches, you see the sign in front of the church and it says, Faithful Baptist Church. Faith Baptist Church or, or uh, Church of Christ or... Church of the Nazarene. But if you take off the world's glasses and put on God's glasses, you'll see the lettering changes on the sign. Instead of that, that claim to be the Church of Christ, you'll see the word Ichabod written. The glory has departed. God has left his temple, abandoned it to desolation because they have abandoned him. They've been unfaithful to Christ. They have committed spiritual adultery by mixing that they think they can love Christ and love the world, be intimate with Christ and cling to the world too. Take other lovers. After all, this is my husband, but... Certainly, you know, I, I just like these other guys, too. I, I don't really, you know, I, I don't want to be married to them. I just want, you know, but I'm not going to be faithful to my husband. Not to him alone. Big compromises usually don't happen all at once. There's usually a whole lot of little compromises that prepare the way. What's going to happen at your church this Sunday? What's already with, happened with your heart? Perhaps you just think I'm full of it. Could be. But I dare you to search the scriptures. I dare you to turn to the word of God and find out what he expects about the fidelity of his people toward him. I, the Lord, I, your God, am a jealous God. Perhaps you don't believe the God of the Bible is like that because you simply don't believe the Bible. That's the reason. Maybe you read it every day, but you just don't believe what it says. You do it as an act of trying to earn something. Oh, God will bless me if I do this. No, God will bless you if you obey him, if you're faithful to him, if you keep yourself for him and him alone. Holiness unto the Lord. It's a matter of heart. Does your heart belong to Christ? Or is he just one of a set of desires and loves you have? One of many lovers. Does your church fly the American flag over the Christian flag? To proclaiming that Christ truly is not Lord. That America is Lord. That the American government is is above the Lordship of Christ. Well, they're just bearing witness to what they really are. The nearest fundamentalist Baptist church does that very thing. Faith Baptist church. Faith in who? I wonder. And there's shepherd there. Blind shepherd blind. Cannot see what he's doing. Cannot see the stench that must be in the nostrils of God. 
to fly a flag that belongs to the domain of darkness over a flag that's supposed to represent the kingdom of Christ. God forbid. 